Hi, Jeff Picado here from Harpen on Rugby. We've been taking a couple of weeks off since the end of the 22-23 season. Obviously, as Leinster supporters, it didn't exactly end up the way we wanted. But overall, as our first season with our new podcast-based format, we still had a lot of quality rugby to harp on going back to the beginning of last September. And we look forward to getting back to it soon. But I just thought I'd check back in with the TikTok today because there's been a lot of debate on Twitter over the past 24 hours or so since news broke that John Klein might be returning to the South African squad after being pretty much out of the Irish test picture since the 2019 World Cup. Now look, one thing I've learned from doing this over the years is that while we all share a love of rugby, the fact remains we all love it for different reasons. We're all looking for something different from it. And that doesn't necessarily mean any of us is right about what we want from it. It's just different. Now for me, yes, I'm a Leinster supporter. I'm happy when we win, I'm disappointed when we lose, but I'm also an Ireland supporter, also happy when we win, also disappointed when we lose. And to be an Ireland supporter, I believe you have to be able to put the provincial stuff behind you. It's an absolute necessity. Now, when it comes to Klein, of course I appreciate that there's a fear among Munster supporters that if he ends up taking advantage of the new rules to play for the Springboks, there's a chance he might not be able to play for the province again. And no team wants to lose their best players, especially one that played a large part in their winning their first trophy in over a decade. That's totally understandable. You can probably tell I'm about to say, but, right? So here it goes. But what exactly are we trying to say is happening when Klein is left out of the Irish training squad ahead of the World Cup? Does it mean Andy Farrell thinks he's not up to test standard? Does it mean Farrell has something against Klein? Does it mean he's blaming him for Ireland's performance in 2019? Does it serve as further proof that there's an anti munster or pro Leinster bias in the Irish coaching setup? Or could it mean that going back to the squad Farrell picked ahead of the 2021 Autumn Nation series, it seems perfectly obvious that he's a coach that knows the way he wants to play, selects the players he wants to fit that style, regardless of what province they hail from, and since that time has only been on the losing side twice once in Paris against a French side on its way to a Grand Slam, and next in Auckland against an all-black side he went on to beat twice in the following weeks. Now, just to be clear, I'm aware that just because you win a bunch of games in a row, that doesn't guarantee you success in the immediate future. If you recall, I already mentioned I'm a Leinster supporter, so I know this all too well. And nobody's saying anything is guaranteed going into the 2023 World Cup. But seriously, What does a test coach have to do to get a bit of leeway when it comes to his decisions? We all know that no matter what squad he picks, someone's going to be left out, right? We all know that those players who don't quite make it are going to hail from one of the four provinces no matter what, right? And we all know that a test coach probably shouldn't make his decisions based on whether or not that means a player is going to stay at a particular province, right? I could go into defense of the players who made the squad ahead of Klein. I could also go into a defense of Farrell's tendency to go for a more versatile position players on the fringes of the squad. But really, it's not about that. If this was just about a debate over the composition of the squad, I wouldn't be doing this video because we'll always disagree on selections. It's just that there's an extra element to this Klein debate that seems to go too far and probably would have if it involved a player from any of the other three provinces, too. It's perfectly natural for Munster fans to still be on a high after their amazing win in Cape Town. I know I would be if Leinster had found the extra points needed to turn our last couple of results around. And like I already said, it's perfectly natural to be concerned about losing a key player. But I guess all I'm saying here is that maybe those two factors are leading some people to conclusions that are ignoring a lot of other facts. The Irish test squad is in a really, really good place right now. And from what I've seen, it really looks like one of the many things Farrell is good at is giving players he does select the belief they need to overcome pretty much any mental obstacle that can be thrown at them. From the whole never won a test series in New Zealand thing to the whole no matter who he picks, one set of provincial fans is going to complain thing. So this has me wondering, since the URC doesn't kick off again until the World Cup field has been whittled down to just four nations, maybe we can take a break from the provincial stuff just for a few months and be just Irish supporters. Anyway, like I said, a lot of us seem to want different things from following rugby. But just so you know, here at Harpen Manor, we'll be taking another week or two off from the regular content. I mean, there's still a lot going on, like the Irish Sevens of both genders playing in the European series, the top 14 and Super Rugby playoffs. But then we won't be getting back into full swing until the Irish Under-20s kick off in the Junior World Championships. And after that, it'll be all about the World Cup. So please like, share, and subscribe on any or all of our social media channels. Stay safe, everyone. Slan.